got another question for the equilibrium topic. So this one covers a KP calculation and explaining the effects of changing various conditions on an equilibrium. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So first thing we've got to do is draw a cross on an appropriate axis um, where the mixture reaches equilibrium. So it's basically the point in time, so it's going to go on the x-axis, where the partial pressures remain constant. So it's where all of these flatline, so it's going to be around about there. So moving on to part two now, we've got to calculate the partial pressure of the hydrogen in the equilibrium mixture. So we're going to need to calculate the mole fraction for the hydrogen, which would then multiply by the total pressure and that'll give us the partial pressure. So the way I'm going to do this, I call it an ice calculation because we're going to calculate the initial moles, the change in moles, and then the equilibrium moles of all the species in the equilibrium. So the initial moles, carbon monoxide, we were told is 0.23 moles. We're told it's mixed with hydrogen in a one to two mole ratio. So there's going to be twice as many moles of hydrogen. And obviously, initially, there are no moles of methanol. We're also told that the equilibrium mixture contains 0.12 moles of carbon monoxide. So from that, we work out the change in moles of carbon monoxide. So to go from 0.23 to 0.12, it's obviously lost 0.11 moles. That's how many moles have reacted. Then we'll just apply the mole ratio now. So twice as many moles of hydrogen will react, which means that the moles of the equilibrium is going to be the difference between those two. And then moving on to the moles of methanol formed, it's going to be the same as the moles of carbon monoxide that's reacted because of the one-to-one -one ratio there. So obviously that means there's going to be 0.11 moles of methanol in the equilibrium mixture. So the reason we need to know all of these is because we need to work out the total moles and then find out the mole fraction for the hydrogen. So the mole fraction for hydrogen is 0 0.5106, dot, 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 just means I'm keeping the full number in the calculator. So we just need to multiply this by that total pressure to get the partial pressure, which gives a partial pressure for hydrogen of 5.31 times 10 to the 3 kilopascals. Moving on to part 3, got to write the Kp expression and give its units. So, as always, any equilibrium constant is has products over reactants and the balance in numbers will be powers. So, for this equilibrium, it's the partial pressure of the methanol divided by the partial pressure of carbon monoxide multiplied by the partial pressure of hydrogen squared. So moving on to the units, so all I've done is put the units of all the terms into the expression. You can see that they're going to cancel, which leaves us with 1 over kPa squared, and then we'll just bring that up to the top and flip its sign. Moving on to part 4, some more carbon monoxide is added to the equilibrium mixture. So we've got extra CO in there. That's obviously going to shift the equilibrium over to the right, so the partial pressure of methanol is going to increase. Now they haven't changed the temperature because the equilibrium has reached the original temperature T, which is mentioned at the start of the question. So because the temperature hasn't changed, Kp is unchanged. And finally, part five, state the effect, if any, on the addition of a catalyst on the value of Kp for this equilibrium. So adding the catalyst doesn't change Kp, and that's because it increases the rate of both reactions, forward and reverse, by the same amount or equally. So the position of the equilibrium hasn't changed. 